Hey, it's Frank here with 4D Honeybee and I'm set to do my last extraction of the season. Uh, hive number two over here has already given me about 50 pounds of honey and I'm hoping that uh, that last super will probably contain in another 20 pounds or so. Hive number one there has been in trouble all latter half of the summer. They've made three or four different queens and uh, when I last checked it about two weeks ago they had made another queen a little uh, about a week before that so there's either been a unfertilized queen laying drone eggs or a worker bee laying drone eggs there and it's in rough shape so we'll give it a thorough inspection and see uh, if they've made any improvement I decided not to intervene much into that hive just to hope they can uh, work it out on their own I didn't want to take anything from hive number two here which has been very healthy so um, I'm gonna extract honey from hive number two and uh, do an inspection on hive number one and thanks for joining me Hive number two here has become really aggressive throughout the, the summer as the season has progressed. They uh, basically start attacking as soon as I get two or three frames into the inspection. So it's early morning. Uh, I decided to do it first thing in the morning and hope they might be a little calmer. They should be starting to get rid of their drones soon. It's mid-September. It's September 11th. And uh, uh, my thoughts are with uh, my American friends on your on your day of mourning and remembrance. And... Uh, out here early in, early in the morning, hoping they can uh, they cannot be too bothered, and uh, later on in the day we will remember our American friends. Okay, so we're going to remove this top super here, and the last time I checked it a couple of weeks ago, it was uh, probably about 90% drawn out, and about I'd say 75% capped with honey. So. I have seen that the worker bees are starting to drag out the drones and kill them and get them out of the hive. It's mid-September, so that's the right time for it to be happening. We've had an incredibly warm fall and summer here in Toronto, Ontario. Uh, this week we had a high temperature, which I've never experienced before. We had 35 degrees Celsius, which is 95 Fahrenheit. So uh, the bees have had a good fall for production. Maybe you can see some of the goldenrod in the back, but goldenrod is in full bloom now and it will be until like November. So they've got a lot of pollen and nectar. They should be reducing their size now and this hive has been doing really well, but it's also gotten really nasty. They don't like uh, being inspected. So we'll see how she goes. I'm gonna get rid of all these bees here up top. I'm gonna drop them back in the, uh, back into the hive bodies and Hopefully they won't get too riled up. It's pretty early in the morning here. It's only just after 8 o'clock. And uh, I'm going to try not to smoke them much, but I pretty much have to smoke these guys more than I like because they do get pretty riled up. So what I'm going to do is remove the whole box, and then one by one I'll bring the frames back and drop the bees into the, uh, into the hive boxes below. They always just start to get worked up when they crack the hive. Uh, one listener below, or one subscriber below, mentioned that a good method to pull off the uh, super is to give it a little twist before you actually pull it off. And you won't get as much of that cracking that kind of drives them nuts. So I'm going to give that a try and see if that works. I suspect there's probably, I don't know, 20 pounds of honey, which probably brings the super into about 30 pounds of weight. So shouldn't be too bad to manage but we'll see I'm gonna smoke them a little bit if I can get the smoker to work we got a ton of rain all of yesterday uh, rain pretty much all day off and on there's tornado warnings and such so everything's pretty wet so I'm having trouble keeping my, my uh, smoker going and that's gonna be pretty important because these bees have been nasty of late so smoke coming out but I don't want to overdo it anyway so let's see if we can give this a little twist and lift and bring it right off that's good all right now we're gonna see what kind of uh, what kind of honey harvest I'm gonna get here Wow. 
they have really glued these frames together, which is just fine. And it looks like there is a good amount of capped honey here. Wow. Here's the first frame I've pulled out. What do you think? Look at that. 100% capped on both sides. Got to be careful how you handle this. You can see where I uh, just touched it, just touched the comb with my uh, hive tool, and of course I've damaged it. So we'll get these bees off. Not many of them to get off, which is nice. I'm just going to try to be a little extra careful here not to damage the uh, the honeycomb as I pull it out. Here's a frame that's just partially drawn out and partially capped. It was actually fused to the other frame here, so I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing or indifferent, but this side here about 90% about capped, so that'll be good. I'll bump off as many bees as I can, as you just saw there, just by shaking them. And then I'll get the rest of them off with the, uh, with the brush. We'll see how it goes. Next frame here is pretty good. Mostly capped. I find the bees don't get happy when you shake them off their honey for some reason. I wonder why that is. Here's one frame that was completely untouched, and this is right in the middle of the hive. And again, no idea why that is. Usually, they start building honey, or they start building comb from the inside out. But you see this time, they just didn't, decided just not to touch a frame at all. This uh, super has been on for about a month now, and uh, they started building it out pretty much immediately as soon as I put it in. Now here's a, an absolutely perfect frame here of capped honey. And you know what I should be also doing is having a bit of a closer look for the queen now that there's a few more bees on these frames because while you don't expect her to be up here, she could be up here. And I definitely would want to handle her carefully if she happens to be on one of these frames. So I didn't see her here, but my first year of beekeeping, I found that to be one of the hardest things to do is to actually locate the queen. Particularly because uh, in this hive, the queen was unmarked. In my other hive, the queen was marked, but they got rid of her right away. So they got rid of her within the first month, which was a shame because she was doing really well. Okay, so I've removed the super, got it to the car without much of an incident. 
And now all I want to do is just remove a little bit of burr comb that's uh, on the top of these frames here. And then I'm going to leave these guys alone and get into the second hive, which is struggling a lot more than this one. So not much smoke coming out of here, so I'm not smoking them that badly. But I'm just going to remove this little bit of burr comb. Hopefully not hurt too many bees. And close up this hive. Because as you can see, they get pretty nasty when you mess with them. So we'll close this up now and uh, get into the second hive. And then uh, I'll take that uh, those supers home and uh, I'll show you the process from there on in as well. Okay, so we're just about ready to start spinning, uncapping and spinning this honey. Here's an empty frame. We weighed this with the help of my lovely assistant, Hello. Dr. Isabel. And uh, the empty frame was 0.6 of a pound. And the full frame behind it was 4.2 pounds. So we're looking at th about three and a half pounds of honey mixed with uh, wax on most frames here. So with nine frames in there, that could mean we end up with, you know, 20, 25 pounds of honey. We will wait at the end as well to see how much we get. So Isabel's gonna take this decapping tool and you can see that all it is is a roller, spiky roller. She's gonna roll it through the comb just to poke holes in each one of those cells. And once she does, it will start to leak out. And once it starts to leak out, we will put it then into the spinner over here. You know, just do two frames at a time. It's sort of your ba ba bargain basement spinner, but it's worked really well. And uh, that will start extracting honey for us. So if you do use this decapping method, you have to make sure that... Uh, you gotta go fast. And you go quickly, because once you decap it, as you can see, it starts pouring out. And... Uh, you want all that honey to be inside your spinner and not sitting on a on a baking tray. Isabel's doing a good job. She's going side to side and then up and down on the ends in particular because the ends sometimes we miss it. But she'll do that, spin it over and get the other side and then we'll be ready to spin our first couple of frames. So the frames are in the spinner here and as you can see you need to make sure you put the, spray, the, the frames in opposite so that the machine is in balance. Go ahead and tell us what you're doing now, Isabel. Um, so pretty much I'm going to assume you've seen the video where um, my dad did this with my brother, but if you haven't, um, go check it out. Um, but so pretty much what, literally what this machine does is you put in the frames, you crank this, and then you see we've decapped the frames, so um, pretty much as it will rapidly spin it, as you can see, and the honey will go flying against the edges, so making it a piece of cake to just pour it. One thing as well that we learned the last time we did this is not to spin it too fast. Awesome. Now these frames are plastic lined. If you look at it here, you see they're plastic, they're not wax. So I suspect they'll be a little more durable. But the wax frames that we spun, it was a pretty warm day and I let them sit in the sun for a while thinking that would get more of the honey off them. I was correct, but it also made all the wax or a lot of the wax fly right off the frames and kind of destroy three or four frames. So this time we'll go much more gradually, especially at the beginning. That was a, a bit of advice that another YouTuber gave me. Um, and once they do, uh, lose some of their mass of honey, we can flip them around a couple of times to get the other side out and then uh, it will be less likely that we do damage to the frames. So we've just spun this frame and before we spun it we weighed it and it was 3.1 pounds and now you can see after spinning it's exactly 1.1. So we've taken two pounds of honey out of this one and we'll do it again for the next one and see what kind of average haul we're getting per frame. So this is the second frame. It came out and it was, what was this one? Four... 4.2. And after spinning it, it is now 1.0. So we got 3.2 pounds out of this one. So between two and three pounds of haul per frame. We've got nine frames and all of them aren't this full. So probably gonna get about 10 pounds of honey out of this. 
out of this super here. Just a quick shot of the spinning process. When you look down the side of the drum, you can really see the honey flying off. See the shiny bits hitting the side. And you do see pieces of wax and stuff flying off of it too. That's all pretty normal. You'll end up with a lot of wax down the side too. That's all part of the process. Strain it up. Bit of a word of advice here. If you start spinning this and it starts to wobble, like this one is doing quite a bit, what you do is just keep spinning it at a relatively moderate or slow speed and then stop it, flip the frames around and go at the other side at a fairly moderate to slow speed. Just the fact that you get a little bit of honey out will balance it off quite a bit and the less the frames weigh, the less they'll wobble despite the fact that they're balanced differently. So again, that's advice that a YouTuber gave me and I've done it and it works really well. So give it a shot if you need to do it just like Isabel is doing here. Now, even though we're just doing this side for the first time, we'll notice that it doesn't wobble as much. Yeah, how's that, Isabel? Much better. Much better, you can see. Still hasn't gotten a top speed, but it's not wobbling anywhere near as much. So now we'll do this one for a few minutes until we get all the honey out of this side, and then we'll spin them back around and get the rest of the honey out of the first side that we did, which caused the wobble. Okay, so we had a little conundrum, which is that we had nine frames of honey to spin. And of course, you need to spin it in an even number of frames for it to be in balance. So what we did was we took the, the least full frame of honey, which is this one right here, and we uh, put it in and then put in two frames that we've already spun. Because we weighed them all and they seem to be about the same weight. Now, they're not the same weight distribution inside the basket. But we think that if we just go slow, it should be close enough that the whole thing won't spin apart. And actually, as you can see, without even holding the, sh the thing, it's working out really well and it's spitting out a lot of that honey. So that's one way to work out an imbalance if you have an odd number of frames. Just wait until you get to the last frame and then put two of the uh, already empty spun frames in the opposite end and you'll be able to do it no problem. Okay, so we spun all of our frames. My lovely wife went out and got us some cheesecloth. We're gonna use the uh, extractor to just drip the honey down through this colander, this strainer, with the cheesecloth into this bucket, and then we'll go from the bucket into the bottles, and we will be done. We're also gonna remove the wax from those frames, and my wife and daughter are gonna do something with the wax, we just don't know what, but that'll be the last step of this process. Second to last step of the process, we take the uh, spinner here, the extractor, elevate it a little bit, and open up the spigot, the gates, to pour it down into this cheesecloth covered strainer. I like to pin the cheesecloth down with these pins, but you've got to adjust the flow rate on your gate so that you don't uh, overflow it and have the honey touch all this stuff. So, I'm going to probably slow it down there for a bit and just let do a real slow process of straining this honey. It gets us the really, really good final product that we like. Then the next step would be to fill this thing up and then once it's all strained, let it sit for a day and then fill up bottles and she's done. What do you say, Tower? You can do that? You can do that? Good boy. You can see there is plenty of wax that comes out. As a matter of fact, if the gate open this uh, this little, there's a good chance that big chunks of wax will come in and clog it right up and reduce the flow to zero. But again, this is a patience game. This is what makes the difference between getting real clean filtered honey and not. Um, if you look inside, 
even though the decapping process is probably the one that minimizes the amount of wax that gets in, you can see here there's still a lot of wax in there, right? All the white stuff that you see in there is wax. You can see it all along the walls of the uh, extractor as well. Isabel is going to demonstrate how she removes the wax from the frames there. These are plastic frames, so they're pretty durable. And we're using a wooden spatula there. See, she just gets in there and scrapes it right away, right down. And we will do something with this wax. We don't know what yet, but Isabella and her mom are going to probably do candles and we might do some kind of a soap or lip balm as well. For now we're just cleaning up the frames, we'll wash them as well and then we'll store them in plastic and hope that uh, no critters get in them before next year. Nice work guys. Okay, so this is the final step in the whole process now. You can see the line here of honey that we got from about 9 medium frames. It ended up being around 20 pounds. I weighed this whole system here and it's about 24 pounds now. So, um, And you can see, we've, I've let it sit for two days. You don't have to let it sit for that long. I just couldn't get back to it. But you can see in here that uh, there's just a little bit of very fine wax on the top of the, uh, of the honey. And that'll just come out in your last couple of bottles type of thing. But that's very acceptable as far as the whole filtering process has gone. I've been really happy with it. It looks like it's a little darker than the stuff I took in the spring and summer. So we'll just start the bottling process now and uh, maybe give it a little sample taste as we go as well. So again, you just uh, loosen up this little wing nut here and open up the gate. And out comes your liquid gold. So that's it. I'll just do this one bottle for now. I'll get the, the rest of the bottles ready, but I just wanted to show you how we do it here at 40 Honeybee. And um, we'll compare it to the previous ones that we've done just to, uh, just to see what it looks like. It looks on the outside like it's just a little bit darker than the stuff I, uh, I uh, extracted in the uh, in the spring I'll bring another bottle up and we'll do a quick comparative of that and then uh, we'll store this my total take for the year on one, essentially one and a half hives was going to be 90 pounds so I'm really happy with that and uh, it's just for my own personal consumption and to give to family and friends so um, hopefully now we'll start working on winterizing the hives and getting them ready to survive the winter so here's a shot of the new batch compared to the old, the new batch being on the right. And maybe it's just a touch darker, but uh, very similar. And the taste is absolutely amazing. It just tastes light compared to what you buy in the stores and, uh, and a little more floral. So, uh, so that's it. We'll, uh, we'll bottle the rest of this 20 pounds of honey. And uh, next thing we'll do is uh, we'll do some videos on winterizing the hive and feeding. So thanks again for joining me, Frank at 4D Honeybee.